What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. And today I have the luxury of having a special guest on my channel. And it is none other than the one and the only Blacktastic Media. Thank you very much for joining me, my man. So today in this video, we are going to be diving into Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy, which includes Batman Begins, came out in 2005, The Dark Knight, which came out in 2008, and The Dark Knight Rises, which came out in 2012. So not only are we gonna be talking a little bit about these movies, but we are also gonna be talking about these movies in relation to the newer continuity of DCEU movies. So before I get into my thoughts about these films and how they pertain to the newer age of DCEU movies, let's put it over to my boy, Blacktastic. Yo, <laughs> what's up? Happy New Year. It is 2024. Bringing in the new year, kicking it with my main man, the big Rob Theory. He hit me up and said, yo, man, let's get together, do a collab. Let's talk some Batman. I'm like, yo, I'm with it. Batman is easily my favorite DC superhero character, man, because in so many ways, when I was little, he was relatable. If I had some money, and if I was pissed off that somebody killed my parents, I too can be Batman. Couldn't be Superman. Uh, I don't know the brothers from Krypton. You know, I don't have superhuman powers, but Batman made you want to just be better to fight crime in a, in a, in a rundown, beat-up city like Gotham, right? Hell, I could have saved Compton if I was Batman, but you know. And Batman has been done to death. Good and bad. You know, I grew up on the old sitcom that was in that ultra vibrant color. <laughs> uh, Tim Burton brought to life. Easily one of my favorite Batmans. Um, the Dark Knight trilogy is beloved pretty much by everybody. And then, you know, we had uh, Ben Affleck's Batman. I think universally he was liked. The movies he was in not so much and now we got the new matt reeves batman so i'm gonna focus on the dark knight trilogy christopher nolan did the damn thing now i'll be the first to tell you i don't like christian bell as batman nor bruce wayne i thought he wasn't very good at all he's small in stature uh so was michael keaton but i just think michael keaton was better but i didn't like i didn't like christian bell's batman I felt like he was in the best Batman movies. And that's what sets him apart. Then when Ben Affleck came out as Batman, I'm like, now, now that's Batman. He don't need no armor. He don't need no fake muscles. Put that man in a material suit and that's that dude's body. He got the chin for it. He was debonair and handsome as Bruce Wayne. It fit, it worked. The movies, eh. Not so much. Michael Keaton is just a world-class actor. He was our first rendition of Batman on the big screen, so that's all we knew. But um, I thought he did it well. Again, no rubber suit with fake muscles with Ben Affleck. With everybody else, fake-ass muscles. But I got to tell you, man. The Batman, Matt Reeves' version, might be my favorite of them all. Michael Keaton... And Tim Burton have a special place in my heart. But in all seriousness, the Batman, how he portrayed Batman in year two, Catwoman or the Cat Burglar, I like the way they did her. The Penguin, my God. Then you had the Riddler. We took the Riddler serious for once. The old sitcom TV show, was Riddler was, was, was crazy. Um, Jim Carrey, yeah. Um, this was real serious. And I like Gotham. This is probably my favorite Gotham besides Tim Burton's version of Gotham. Um, Chicago dressed up as Gotham and um, the Dark Knight trilogy, didn't care for it, didn't like it. It was Chicago. Um, I think Christopher Nolan was just so in tune how to direct those movies. That's why the movies are so great. The cast was, was was pretty damn good as well. Um, now that Matt Reeves has a chance to do his own trilogy, it might be better 
than the Dark Knight trilogy. I don't know. Because um, let's face it, man. Christopher Nolan outdid himself with the Dark Knight. Once you made that first one, Batman Begins, then the Dark Knight. Uh, the Dark Knight, the last one was not ever going to be good as the second one. That's just he painted himself into a corner. Um, some directors do that, including myself. Uh, I've been asked all the time, are you doing a third one for what have I done? I've done it again. The, the Dunn series, the Dunn tr trilogy. I'm like, I don't know. Two is going to be hard to beat. So, you know, sometimes you're forced to do things out of um, necessity or you're being pushed to do it. You're not really ready. But um, that third one I thought was damn good. I like Bane as a character. Um, and that version of Catwoman was cool too. But the Dark Knight is like perfect. It's perfect. And it will always be the one that everybody talks about the most. So the DCEU, man, damn it, they dropped the ball when it came to Batman. It was so comic booky in certain scenes, the way he was jumping off buildings and moving around, you know, it just, okay, I'm trying to be believable and comic booky mixed with the same thing. You know, the, the, the blend just didn't work for me. Ben Affleck was great, but that Justice League version of Batman was was, was pretty damn bad. It was terrible. Uh, Justice League, the Snyder Cut was better. And um, Batman v Superman, mm, I liked him better in that one than I did Justice League. And then, you know, he had a small stint in Suicide Squad, but I liked him. Diving after the car into the water, uh, messing around with my girl, Holly Quinn. I thought that was pretty dope of Ben Affleck to have that small role in Suicide Squad. But Matt Reeves has a chance to change it for good. And he's already done that. Now you got Mr. Gunn, James Gunn. I'm curious what his Batman is going to be like. Because James Gunn is like the comic book guru besides my man over there at Marvel. So I'm curious this might be even better than all the Batmans. I don't know, but I'm excited to look forward to it. Batman, like I said, is beloved by everybody. So many different versions of him that everybody finds their own niche in all of these movies. Again, my personal favorite in my heart will always be the Tim Burton version and now the new Matt Reed version. Um, Christopher Nolan, I can watch The Dark Knight whenever. That movie is just, like I said, perfect. The other two, I don't ever have to see again. Um, I'm not going to even talk about Val Kilmer and uh, George Clooney Batman. That was just ridiculous. <laughs> but I think DC's in a good spot. You know, it's hard to recapture that magic. But the Batman, damn. That new version of the Batmobile, when that thing lit up and started up, in the dark, even the penguin was like, what is that? Matt Reeves directed a perfect movie. And even though he's only in year two, he didn't get a whole lot of Bruce Wayne, the, the suave debonair, but he's still trying to learn who he is because that's not who he is. He is Batman. Bruce Wayne is his persona. It's his alter ego to fake everybody out. But... When the Batman 2 comes out, that might change everything. This might be even a better trilogy than the Dark Knight trilogy. We'll see. I'm hoping that it will because I loved that movie. I've watched it multiple times. It's not too long for me. I never get bored. That movie's badass. I love the ending of the movie. When him and Catwoman Pat, um, parted ways for the last time, they went in opposite directions, but he's looking in his rear view mirror as he's driving off in his motorcycle and you see his reflection. And it holds that angle on that camera for a while. Then boom, goes the dark. Matt Reeves, you a bad man. <laughs> that's a great movie. But you know, that's my input on Batman. The whole, as a whole, of how I feel about the dude. Like I said, one of my favorite characters of all time. There's some good movies. There's some bad movies. There's some okay movies. Um, everybody brought something to the character. And that's for damn sure. But uh, going forward... I'm looking forward to what James Gunn does because 
That's really got my curiosity. But in the meantime, next year, 2025, Matt Reeves Batman, yes, back on the big screen. I can't wait. With that, I'm gonna turn it back over to my man, the Big Rob Theory. Again, Happy New Year. Wishing y'all the best. Let's keep it going. Peace, one love. You know how we get down. I'm out. Appreciate your thoughts on these films, man. And I really do appreciate your thoughts on the DCU in general. Thank you very much, Blacktastic, for that. So the Christopher Nolan films have a certain aesthetic about them that the newer DCEU movies do not have. Christian Bale, Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, Cillian Murphy, Morgan Freeman. All of these actors have been in all three of the films. There's obviously others who Heath Ledger, rest in peace, was in The Dark Knight. And then Anne Hathaway, who played Catwoman, Selena Kyle, was in The Dark Knight Rises. So personally, in my opinion, I feel like the reason that these movies did so well when they came out was because of the dark and gritty nature of these movies, but also how they pertained to real life and how the politics and the romantics and everything that went into these movies actually pertain to real life issues but it's not only that it's the fact that these movies had this dark and gritty tone that we all know that dc has these dark comics and like the, the storylines are very dark. that's why in the dcau the new 52 continuity has a lot of darker movies and that's probably why they did so well is because fans loved the notion behind the dark aspect of these uh comic book movies I, lo I love what uh, Blacktastic said about the fact that if he were Batman, that he could have saved Compton because chances are, fact. but also, if I had the money, I could easily be Batman. A lot of these people who have so many millions and billions, the fact that you aren't Iron Man or Batman by now, what the hell are you doing? So something else that Blacktastic said that I have to really agree with is Matt Reeves, the Batman. Now that movie was so well done so very well thought out and well acted by a lot of people robert pattinson and zoe kravitz together them bruce wayne and selena kyle batman and catwoman great chemistry i wouldn't say flawless chemistry but damn yeah. this movie was in my opinion top tier dceu obviously you have tim burton's michael keaton batman and that's just goaded in general like that is just a great version of batman and i love michael keaton so batman. when i saw him show up in the flash Amazing, very well earned. But there's something about Matt Reeves as the Batman that screams what the DCEU should have had and what the DCEU sh needed, honestly. I'm not the biggest fan of Christian Bale being Batman or Bruce Wayne. I, don't get me wrong, he's not bad. He's not terrible. I don't hate him, but I'm just not the biggest fan of him being Bruce Wayne or Batman. Ben Affleck now, he is a great Batman and Bruce Wayne. Michael Keaton, same thing. Robert Pattinson, honestly, same thing. Especially in regards to year one, year two Batman. Robert Pattinson did a great job in the Batman for that. But what these movies captured, what a lot of the DCEU movies are missing nowadays, it's unmatched, man. Like just the storytelling, the storytelling behind Batman and Bruce Wayne involving Ra's al Ghul, involving Talia al Ghul, Catwoman, involving Harvey Dent, Carmine Falcone. It, it, it just, everything was just not necessarily flawless, but it just worked so well and the pieces went so well together that that's why this trilogy, in my opinion, and a lot of other fans' opinions, this trilogy did so well. And I hate that a lot of the newer DCEU movies like Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, Justice League, not the Snyder Cut, but regular Justice League directed by Joss Whedon, not great, but then you have the Snyder Cut, no, the Snyderverse version of the Justice League, which is the four hour cut, and it's really, really good. Actually, much better than the original version of the original Suicide Squad, and then the Suicide Squad that was directed by James There's Gunn. There's so many movies in the DCEU that aren't terrible, but the continuity didn't f flesh out very well. There was not very well fluidity with it. And then there were so many things that were so wrong within the actual house of Warner Brothers and uh, DC with the actors, AKA Ray Fisher, Ezra Miller, and it, at Ray Fisher, it was more of racial undertones with that. And then Ezra Miller is just a piece but of shit. There's just so many things that went wrong with the DC universe. And I feel like hopefully with James Gunn coming in, we get some stuff that we were really hoping for. 
the authority coming in wow the ragtag band of superheroes that dishes out their own version of justice and doesn't give a crap about how they do it and who is affected yeah i'm looking forward but to in that. general i just really hope that the dcu makes a comeback because they kind of dropped the ball man henry cavill great superman. one of the best if not the best choices for superman that we've seen Ben Affleck, great, great choice for a Batman and Bruce Wayne. Ezra Miller, throw him out the window. I don't really care. Ray Fisher, good as Cyborg. I would take I would take something else with him as Cyborg. And Gal Gadot, uh, hell yeah. Wonder Woman through and through. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we need a Green Lantern as well. And then we have Zachary Levi as Shazam. And again, those movies, they're fun. They're cool. But it's not what it should be like justice league war the animated movie that was great that was absolutely great and i really wish that the dceu would take after the dc that's a whole other video in and of itself which we can definitely get to so again thank you so much blacktastic for joining me for this collab i really appreciate it man you know and a lot of other people know how much of a huge dc fan i am so to have you on for this meant a lot and if you me. aren't subscribed to the channel please hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you can get a notification anytime there's a new video thanks again for watching guys until the next one